Hey everyone, what's up? It's Babylonius from PeakOfSerenity.com here with a, another minor redo to my Mythic um, Artificer Zymox commentary video. Um, thought I'd go back through, add a little bit of additional information as well as some other things that um, I have noticed in the past couple weeks um, when killing this boss. So to get right into it, um, if you check out the description below, you'll see links to PeakOfSerenity.com and the Discord links to ways to support me through Patreon and PayPal, as well as links for uh, things like my weak auras and, and whatnot. So uh, be sure to check that out if you're interested. Um, if not, we'll, we'll get started. Uh, so Mythic uh, Artificer Zymox is generally the fourth or maybe fifth boss um, that you're going to go towards, whether deciding, uh, depending on whether or not you do Sun King first or this first. Uh, personally, my guild uh, went with Artificer first, um, as we were a little bit hesitant about uh, Sun King, but uh, Zymox is primarily a single target fight. Uh, there is the propensity for there to be an additional target or two, um, but that typically means that somebody else screwed up, um, so it's not something you can generally count on. Um, but again, it's really primarily single target. So looking at talents, um, Eye of the Tiger, Chi Wave, Chi Burst, generally you're going to want to go with Eye of the Tiger. Uh, the exception would be if you're going with hit combo. Uh, sometimes if you have to run out, for example, to kite ghosts or to move seeds, um, then you might want to use Chi Wave just to uh, give you something else to use in between in order to help keep your hit combo going when you're out of range of the boss. Um, if you are uh, comfortable you know, without Chi Wave, then Eye of the Tiger um, is a reasonable um alternative. Chi Burst can be used, um, and certainly if you are in a group that you find people getting hit by traps frequently, Chi Burst can have a little bit of extra value. Um, so it's a reasonable possibility, but generally if the team is playing well, um, it's not one that you're going to, you know, you'll probably pick one of the other two. Uh, Tiger's Lust is very useful here. Um, it has kind of the added benefit of being able to put it on somebody else. Uh, for example, I very frequently would put it on whoever was clearing the traps uh, in order to help um, get through that and uh, help them, you know, get from place to place faster. Uh, Ascension, Fist of the White Tiger are both reasonable options. Um, Ascension, it will generally be, you know, probably a little bit behind Fist of the White Tiger. However, if you are in a situation where you are running seeds or, um, you know, getting targeted by Ghost, Ascension might gain a little bit more value um, if you find yourself capping energy just because Ascension gives you that little bit of extra energy cushion um, before capping. So Fist of the White Tiger is a reasonable default um, is just fine. Uh, good Karma is very useful. Um, there's a lot of kind of consistent damage putting out, so using Touch of Karma um, to heal yourself as well can be useful. And there really isn't anything to Ring of Peace um, or, or Leg Sweep in the fight. Uh, you're going to want to use Diffuse Magic in general. Uh, inner Strength actually can be reasonably useful on this fight because there's a lot of relatively consistent damage. Um, however, you know, if you are running Seeds, if you get targeted by Ghosts, then Inner Strength is going to fall off. Um, so Diffuse Magic is useful to uh, just kind of help your healers a little bit when it comes to the big Glyph of Destruction damage. Uh, like I mentioned, you know, it's primarily single target, so hit combo... Uh, is probably slightly better, um, but if you're not comfortable with using, um, you know, maybe Chi Wave, or you're if you're just not comfortable with keeping hit combo up, especially during times where you might have a lot going on, um, there's a lot going on in this fight, um, then Ch Dance of Chi G is a reasonable alternative. You're not going to dramatically lower your DPS by choosing so. Uh, and lastly, Whirling Dragon Punch is, um, you know, your best choice. Uh, similarly, because it's single target, you know, you're going to want to fo focus with uh, coordinated offensive as a conduit, as well as um, add in the uh, strike with clarity if you're carrying or um, another option. Um, you can check out the flowchart in Discord, um, or I will likely make a, a video about the conduits and, and that flowchart specifically um, in order to, to talk about that stuff in the future. So be on the lookout for that. Uh, so getting actually into the fight, uh, the fight is generally split up into three phases. Uh, the first phase, um, for example, we fight him here um, in the middle, uh, pull the boss to us, just go through your, general, your regular burst. Um, one of the unique things about Zymox is depending on your push timings, a lot of guilds uh, want to hold their cooldown. So um, for rough, roughly around the 3 minute 250 to 310 minute mark, 
um, which is when you have kind of the biggest window to damage the boss. Um, that's when a lot of guilds will use will save bloodlust and stuff for that. So pay attention to when you your group is using uh, bloodlust and other cooldowns as to whether or not you want to save your second round of buffs. Um, Glyph of Destruction, which just came out, goes on the tank. The tanks run away. It's a very useful ability to use something like Karma or Diffuse Magic, um, but partly because of how frequently it comes out, but and just because it's something that the healers are going to be paying a lot of attention to anyway. Um, it's not an avoidable bit of damage, so it's just useful to to mitigate that as best you can. Um, as you can see, and I'll pause it right here. Um, there are tears in. Uh, they put down you know, what function is portals. Um, so you'll have two different points that you're going to want to drop to. Melee will generally always get one, and then range will always get one as well. So make sure you're paying attention to that. Um, these stasis traps that drop, if you get caught in them, you are frozen and um, you have to be manually broken out. Uh, again, those are the things that if somebody is going to be hitting in those, you can switch to that and get a nice juicy touch of death out of it because um, you're generally only going to get touch of death once in this fight. Um, so kind of looking at a bunch of different things, um, you know, there's Glyph of Destruction going on the tank, you have the Seeds going out. Windwalker is a very strong class for moving the Seeds. Um, I was not selected to do so in my group. Um, I was the first backup, um, so I don't believe I did that on any of on this kill. Um, but that's, you know, a, a possibility. Um, if you get targeted with the ghosts there, like I just did, you, know, you want to make sure that you time getting through so you don't get hit by the seeds as well as don't get hit by the ghosts. Um, it's key to when getting attacked by the ghosts or targeted by the ghosts to watch your, um, debuff. Uh, the debuff will go off, but the ghosts will visually stay out there. Um, so once the debuff is off, you can't be mind controlled. You know, so that's an important thing to do is they might still be coming at you, but you can't be mind controlled even if they strike you. Um, so that's important. Um, this is a fight where you're going to want to generally keep transcendence near the boss at all times um, just to kind of make things easier in case you get targeted with some type of mechanic. Um, and that is very important. You know, so this is the second phase, um, which is when you start getting the seeds, you start getting, um, you know, uh, the seeds are really the big mechanic and, and stuff like that. So. Once uh, Zymox hits 60% is when you go into kind of the final phase. Um, and you'll see we're coming up. We're at 2.30. I've been holding my cooldowns for a while. Um, we made the decision to hold them until um, Bloodlust. You know, so that that's kind of the safest bet uh, just because there's less mechanics going out. Certainly you can risk it um, by popping it earlier. You won't get quite the same value um, because of Bloodlust. Um, or because of not having bloodlust, um, but that's just something that's up to you, and it's important to look at your options. Um, so this is the big knockback, as you can see. Um, I had just about the worst thing happen where I was on the far side. Um, however, Windwalker is very strong. Roll and Flying Serpent Kick are not um, affected by the slow, uh, nor is Transcendence. So those are things that you really can utilize very well to uh, help keep yourself out of that. There's really no reason why you should get hit by that. Um, the drawback, the annihilation. Um, if you get hit by that, that's kind of your fault. Um, so as you see a little bit ago, we popped all of our cooldowns. Bloodlust, this is kind of the big window uh, between things like seeds and the annihilations. Um, so this is when we tried to pump as much boss damage as we possibly could. Um, and this is when, you know, I pop all of my, all of my cooldowns. So you know, it was a little bit after the three minute mark, you know, and that's the thing that you're going to want to be aware of what your group is doing, how your group is handling it and, um, you know, how, how you, you know, what you need to do um, in order to get the most damage um, based on your various cooldown times. Uh, I got very lucky there and ran through a trap and it didn't go off. Um, you know, Windwalkers, again, are very good at this. You're able to kind of keep going and use things like Tiger's Lust, Roll, Flying Serpent Kick, and pretty much ignore that uh, drawback altogether. It's, it, Windwalker is very strong at that. Um, I, I, one thing I didn't notice are these Rift Blasts. You can use those Rift Blasts to trigger Karma. Um, they do a pretty good job of that. Um, but I felt that using it on the Glyph of Destruction was just a lot more effective um, in order to help the healers rather than taking additional damage that I didn't need to take.
Uh, more or less, you know, after that, it's just kind of a, a fight to the end. The goal is to manage the mechanics. This is a very mechanic-heavy fight um, rather than difficulty. You can easily kill this boss with a couple people dead as long as the mechanics are handled. Um, and the enrage timer is very uh, comfortable, you know, so you really don't have to worry about that either. So um, hopefully this you found this video helpful. Um, again, really single target, not super difficult. However, there are just a lot of mechanics um, to worry about and stuff to pay attention to. So um, there's a lot of visual noise going on um, in this fight. So just be attentive to that. Um, but yeah, pretty much once once you get Bloodlust, it's just all about surviving and, and making it to the end, killing the boss before um, they kill you. Uh, so yeah, I hope you found this useful. I hope this helps you get a little bit more damage um, onto your onto your kills and as best you can. So make sure you check out my other videos, uh, my other guide and commentary videos here on my YouTube channel. Subscribe and like um, this video. Let me know in the comments any other ideas you might have for videos or other things I could do to improve. Um, check out peakofserenity.com and the Discord for more information. You know, a lot of good information about Windwalkers. Uh, please support me through Patreon and PayPal, um, the description below. And if you want to see my weak aura, my UI and stuff, that is also linked below in the description. So um, as we kind of bring this fight to the end, you know, really it's just about surviving. So uh, thank you very much. And uh, till next time, have a good night, morning, afternoon, whatever it is, wherever you are.